Today on February 23rd, the newly rebranded Sony Mobile released the beta of the Ice Cream Sandwich ROM for the Xperia Arc S, the Neo V, and the Ray. So I'm just going to walk through how to install it if you have an unlocked bootloader as well as uh, some cautionary steps. So to start off, as always, uh, back up all the data on your phone either using Titanium Backup, uh, Sony's Backup and Restore from the X10, or using uh, the recovery, so CWM. You can just boot into that and uh, do a backup there. Also, Sony recommends that you, re that you be on the 4.2 build. So right now I'm on the 6.2 build, which is the latest version, rooted obviously, but I'm going to flash back to 4.2 so that there's no issues. So I'm just going to power off. If you haven't already, download the flash tool, which you should be familiar with, and then download the ROM for your phone. So either the Arc, or sorry, the Arc S, and there's 4.2 generic. Um, if you haven't already, you're going to need to unlock your bootloader. So either through Sony's official method, or watch my video on how to unlock the bootloader using the paid method. So the paid method works for any phone. You can use it on even if your phone is carrier branded or locked. So once you've finished all that and you've used a program like Titanium Backup to back up your data or the Xperia 2011 recovery program, then you're ready to start. So I'm just going to pull up the flash tool and flash back to 4.2. So arc S and then build 42. Okay. Hold the back button and plug in the phone. So there's the green light. So once the phone is finished flashing, I'm just going to start it up to show that it is a 4.2. So once the phone is started up, I'm just going to go to the settings. And as you can see, I'm back to uh, build 42. So once you're there, you can uh, prepare to flash the Ice Cream Sandwich Alpha. So just a few words before flashing. Uh, once again, your bootloader needs to be unlocked, either through the paid method or the free method. Uh, you should have backed up all your data. And you're going to need the drivers for the flash tool. Uh, this is very advanced, so if you're not familiar with flashing ROMs or using uh, fast boot mode or anything like that, then don't attempt to use this ROM. Uh, there are still bugs in it, and despite them enabling the modem for data and internet, uh, data and calling and text messaging, you still have no Wi-Fi and no Bluetooth, and uh, I don't know about GPS at this point. But uh, so go to the Sony Ericsson website, and you can download the files at the bottom here. So you're going to download the firmware for your specific phone. There you go. And once you've downloaded those files, you're going to get a folder, a zip file, unzip it, and you'll have the notice in the readme, as well as the actual files. You're also going to need either the USB or the fast boot drivers. And I'm just going to demonstrate how to install those. If you don't already have the drivers, go to my media fire folder and just go to drivers and download them. You should already have at least a USB driver installed if you have both Sony Ericsson update service and PC companion installed. So 
so I'm just going to open up Device Manager where I plug in this next part. So to tell, uh, to know if your bootloader is unlocked, you should be able to get a blue LED here when you go into fast boot mode. So what you're going to do is hold the menu button instead of the back button. So you're holding the menu button and then plugging your phone in. The LED won't be green this time, it'll be blue. Oh, sorry, the phone's on. I'm just going to do that again. So power off, hold the menu button, and either plug it in or put in the battery. So there you go, there's the blue LED. On the computer, you should get uh, the Sony Ericsson device. So right here it's actually showing up as a Samsung because I installed Samsung drivers. But it should still work. If it doesn't show up, you're going to need to update the, update the drivers. And then go to wherever you put the fast boot drivers. So for instance, here for fast boot. So for instance there. So once you finish that, you can copy the Sony Ericsson files into the fast boot folder. Make sure you read the README again, as well there's a thread on XDA uh, about the beta. So here's the official uh, thread. Next you're going to want to open up a command prompt. So if you're an administrator you can hold down shift and right click and you should get open command window here. Uh, if you don't see administrator up here, you're going to want to open up manually. So CMD, right click, run as administrator go into the folder, copy this entire path, and then paste. So cd space, change directory, and right click, enter. And there are all the files. So I'm just going to resize this, the windows next to each other. It's just so you can see the commands. So the first command is fast boot, flash, and then the boot and then the boot.img. So it should only take a few seconds. The next one is fast boot, flash, user data, and it's user data.img. And then the last one is fast boot, flash, system. And this one will take the longest. So it's complete. Once that's done, unplug your phone and restart it. As you can see, the Sony Ericsson branding has now been changed to Sony and the Xperia is just booting up now. See a little shimmering glow effect. As always with flashing a new ROM, the first time it always takes a bit longer to uh, start up and set up everything.
and as you can see it's started up so Canada next mobile networks I'm gonna to try to download the settings automatically but this usually doesn't work Search for networks. Rogers synchronize automatically and there you have it there's the new ICS alpha ROM so settings boat it is a LT18i but it will work once you enter in all your uh, internet settings so it's saying it can't download automatically just go into settings mobile networks access point names and then you're gonna have to add it in manually so routers and everything uh, but just to show that it does work I'm just gonna call gonna call a pizza place just to show that uh, the phone does work thank you for calling pizza pizza you can also order online at pizza pizza .ca or download so I'm just gonna enter in the Rogers APN settings off this paste bin here So the name can be anything you want. Oops. Rogers. APN. And S U P L. Okay. So once you've done all that, save. And as you can see up here, uh, you should get 3G or H data. So there it is. And I'm just going to pull up a website just to show that it is working. And there you go. So that's data and phone calls. Text messaging also works, but there's no, right now, there's no Wi Fi. Can't turn it on. And there's no Bluetooth. So once you flash the ice cream sandwich beta, you'll notice that there's no Gmail and you can't sync your phone with your Google account so you can't sync contacts as well the beta firmware doesn't officially support Wi-Fi or Bluetooth but you can get around all these by flashing another kernel installing the Google apps and enabling Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on XDA there's a thread explaining how to do all this so you can either use fastboot to flash another boot image or you can use the automated uh, clockwork mod installer which will install a recovery so you're going to download this program it's an APK copy it to your phone or run it through your browser so I'm just going to demonstrate how to do it using fastboot as well you're going to need to download the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabler as well as Google Apps either Doomlord's version or the CM9 version. So here's the kernel that you're going to boot into. The latest version as of February 24th is version 5. So once you've downloaded all those files, there's the kernel, there's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabler, the boot animation which is optional Google Apps and of course super user for root so I'm just gonna copy the kernel and put it in the fast boot folder so there's a uh, ice cream sandwich beta firmware so once you've downloaded all the zip files you're gonna copy them and put them on the uh, SD card of the phone
now I'm just going to open up command prompt again and navigate to this folder Now you're going to go back into the fast boot folder and connect the phone in fast boot mode. So I'm just going to power off. Hold the menu button and plug in the phone for fast boot mode. So there's the blue light. So once you've done that, you're going to go into fast boot and boot up instead of flash the ROM. So the file is called arc do mode. So arc tab, enter. It's going to download it onto your phone. And when you see do mode's uh, logo pop up, you can start pressing back to get into recovery. So once you're in recovery, it's just like uh, normal. You can use the install zip and install the zip files. So choose zip, put it in ice cream sandwich, you can install the Wi-Fi fix. Install the boot animation. Install super user. And lastly, install all the Google apps. So once all that's complete, you can go in and just reboot the phone. I'm just going to unplug it. So there's the boot animation. and it's just installing and setting everything up. So once it boots up, you'll see you now have the market, Oops. market, Google Talk, and Gmail. And you'll be able to sign in and access your existing account. Um, I'm just going to have to reinstall Maps because I installed it manually. Okay. As well, if you go into Settings, and you should be able to get Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is on. And there it is. So that's how you install the Google Apps as well as get Super User. 
So once again, this is a beta ROM. It's not complete and there's still bugs. If you are not familiar with fast boot or recovery or rooting your phone, don't even attempt to try to use this ROM. Um, as well, if anything goes wrong, just use the flash tool and flash your phone back.